my grandmother and I mm -hmm. that lived here. And my grandmother was living here at the time, it was just the two of them. And she, the reply was, you know, we're are sending you the dollar. If you don't need it, I'll send the rest, you know, if you should. We remember things in such gigantic proportions as to what they really are. Like going to the spring after water, I mean, yeah. it just seemed like it was a right. mile. Yeah. And it's only 50 yards or, you know, over there. Or how about this porch? I bet it seemed gigantic to you. Oh, it, I mean, it was, it was huge. Yeah. And now, I mean, look, you know, you couldn't yeah. even lay across here. And yeah. It was huge. There was a little kid peering out over the top of the rail. And I'd get up in the morning and piss right out there every morning of my life for 60, <laughs> for 14 years. <laughs> In other words, if we went down there, kind of dug into the earth there. Okay, go ahead. It's like an old horseshoe there. Because the creek was so big a part, you know, not only did, it, did you hear the sound, but <laughs> I can't go with the power of your car. <laughs> you don't have to leave that kid anybody to expose that film. It's already exposed. Greg, where can we do this? Uh, my grandmother owns 25. This okay, is, there's 25 acres there, 20 miles. Okay, I'm rolling. Well, Benny, let's do a little reminiscing about this place that's sitting in back of us and what it means to you. Do you have any stories or any uh, incidents that uh, come to your mind about when you were a boy and uh, something that happened here? Well, there's thousands of things that happened, but, uh, you know, you start thinking about them. And uh, we talked a moment ago about the creek getting up. I remember the, the thing being so wide. You wonder about the house going to get washed away. And the, and the creek is, is 75, 100 yards from here, but it uh, the creek would... Uh, it would rain the hard enough that the creek would get up almost to where we're sitting and uh, having to go down the right side of the creek, the you know, not the road through the woods to get someplace to go to school. Uh, uh, as we've talked about uh, every day I would come home from school, my dog would be sitting on this very bank that we're sitting on waiting for me and when I'd come in sight, he'd be sitting here every day, Bob. And one summer I went to school and uh, went from school to Detroit to visit my mother and dad and didn't come home from school. And that dog, they said, sit here for 30 straight days. You know, every day at school time, that dog would say, you're waiting and wondering why I didn't come home from school. And, uh, Do you remember the first time that you thought about wanting to be a race driver? 
Did the thought just occur to you once or did it kind of evolve uh, through growing up? I think it evolved through growing up. Uh, you know, when I was in this house, when I, when I went to sleep in this house, or when I sat out here by myself and daydreamed, I did not dream about being a race car driver. I dreamed about being a football player or a baseball player. Or, uh, it had to do with athletics, mm -hmm. but I did not dream of being a race car driver because I knew nothing about race cars uh, at all. It wasn't until, oh, I don't know, uh, 16, 17 years old that I actually, oh, I would go with my dad when I was just a kid, but it was, that was, you know, I don't know, jalopy type racing, you know, the Saturday night, mm -hmm. and uh, there was nothing serious about it. It was in 1955 or 56 that I went to my first Grand National race in North Wilkesboro, and Tim Flock won the race in, in a Chrysler, and I, I never, I always remember he was from Atlanta, Georgia which was a long way away from here. And, and that gave it a ring of respectability, I guess, the fact that he wasn't a fellow from in Wilkes County. He was from Atlanta, Georgia, in North Wilkes were racing. Do these hills around here call you back? Would you like to come back here and uh, live your final retirement <laughs> years? <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, I, I don't know. Uh, I enjoy here. Uh, I, I would love to come back and you know, maybe get away from it, but uh, I don't know. Would I want to live here? I don't know. I, I guess I just, I, I really don't know. It'd be a huge investment to try to come in and, and clean the place up and build a house and what have you. And um, somebody, didn't somebody say one time you can't ever go home mm -hmm. because it just isn't home anymore? Yeah. I don't really know. But your relatives that still live around here, uh sure do remember you that's obvious oh, yeah. by these uh, cookouts that you have every yeah, time they race yeah. in North Wilkesboro. That's right it you know it's uh, I guess the family has been fairly close uh, because so many of my relations live around here. My mother and father both were born uh, my dad was born right here and my mother was born I don't know four, four or five miles from here and we have a tremendous amount of relations in and around this property uh, so when we have a cookout, we have 300 people that's, that's no further than third cousins. Mm -hmm. And they're all from right around here. So uh, really it is a, is a close-knit family and, and they do remember and they wish me well. And, and for them to, uh, to be able to get together with the racing fraternity every couple of times a year is fantastic. They enjoy it and, I, and hopefully the racing fraternity enjoys it. Okay. <laughs> How'd you get hooked up with DeWitt originally? 1970, uh, went to Daytona, and I crashed the car in the ARCA race. And Hilton Bennett's was... Car? Huh? Bennett's car, probably? No, it was or my not, car. It was... Not, it was Bennett's number and color. Yeah, right? yellow 98, yeah, right. Yeah, your car. Um, Danny, put your hands down just off your knees for a moment just so I can get Bob yeah. listening to you. Okay. Uh, went to Daytona, and I crashed, and he had signed Buddy Young to drive his car. And Buddy Young went to Riverside and flipped the thing about 15 times. And the doctor wouldn't release him to drive. So James Hilton was gonna to go to a Ford that year from a Chrysler to a Ford. 